Sometimes these works are, you know, you're going to the train track. There are stones like in the train track, so we have to like destroy, like um, break the stones for the train tracks. Or we, you know, if there's a flooding, we would go work in the flooding place or sweeping. I mean, all sorts of manual work. Fala pessoal, tudo bem com vocês? Sejam bem-vindos a mais um vídeo do Núcleo da Terra. E hoje o vídeo ele é sobre o depoimento de uma refugiada norte-coreana. Ela vai contar como era a vida dela na Coreia do Norte. Tem muita gente que não acredita nas diversas histórias que a gente conta sobre a Coreia do Norte, perguntando se eu já estive lá, se eu já morei lá, ou se eu já vivi lá. Então nada melhor do que escutar a história da boca de alguém que passou por dificuldades nesse país e conseguiu fugir. E eu sei que muita gente vai falar que é uma história fake, que essa pessoa não é uma pessoa refugiada da Coreia do Norte. Mas deixe nos comentários o que você acha desse depoimento. E se você não é inscrito no canal, se inscreva aqui. Vale a pena, eu te garanto. E não se esqueça de ativar as notificações para você ficar por dentro de todos os vídeos que a gente coloca aqui no canal. E deixe o seu like. Ele é extremamente importante para a gente aqui no Núcleo da Terra. É a maior contribuição que você pode deixar aqui para a gente. Ajuda demais. E sem mais delongas, vamos conhecer essa história. So, finally, I am doing the video and describing and helping you to understand the daily life of a North Korean. But before I dig into that, I really want you to understand my daily life was vastly different from Kim Jong-un's daily life. Therefore, my just one single experience do not represent entire 25 million of daily life. But because I was coming from more common class, not an elite or not a bottom, so you were I think it, it's gonna give you some good taste about general population, how they are living just daily life. So let's go to talking about just weekdays, normal days. As a student, I did go to school. So in the morning around 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. The winter time is later 7 a.m. And so in the morning, we always are assembled in the some kind of a gathering of working together in the mornings. Everybody have to go out and sweeping the like roads. And therefore, uh, a lot of times parents would send their kids to go those places because parents have to like uh, prepare for the breakfast. And they would send me or my sister or my father sometimes go out to do this manual work. So in, in the times when there was electricity was coming, Every household had its radios that we cannot turn off. We can turn down the volume, but we cannot turn off the radio. So this radio, you know, makes like singing these things about socialist paradise and about the happiness of the people, all sorts of these propaganda songs and really making, getting us into the mood of being a revolutionary that day. Sometimes these works are you know, you're going to the train track, there are stones like in the train track, so we have to like destroy, like um, break the stones for the train tracks, or we, you know, if there's a flooding, we would go work in the flooding place or sweeping. I mean, all sorts of manual work. That usually continues from 5 to 7 a.m. or 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., depending on the season. After that, we go home, we all have a breakfast with our families. We have a breakfast around, depending on the family, but my family had a bit later because a lot of other people go to work early, but we didn't have to go that early. So our school was starting before 9 a.m. So we would eat somewhere around like 7.30 to 8, eat very quickly in the morning and run to school by 8 a.m. So in North Korea, there's like no school bus. <laughs> we all have to walk. We, I would go to school around 8 a.m. and it would take somewhere 30 minutes to 45 minutes walking to school and arrive in the before 9 a.m. class. Uh, some schools do start early, but that was I think generally when we started. Then once the class ends, 
There is no like cafeteria in the school. There is ne never such a thing. You either buy bring up the bento box or you just go hungry. Once that lunch time overs around 2 p.m., all the class gathers and they send us to to different labor places. So in the morning we do cover studying about the revolutionary history of the dictators and all how they were defeating our enemies, all those brainwashing things and some like basic math and that was about the whole education. After in that afternoon we all have to wear our like labor clothes and go go to helping farmers in the farm or going to monuments, clean the monuments, or going to train track to you know pull out those plants, or helping the farmers do the harvest. And once that ends around 6 p.m. or 7 p.m., we go home. And usually my mother we would have mom to prepare dinner. So we chop the woods, <laughs> we you know go bring the water because we don't have the running water at home. So we go to the river or somewhere to bring the water home so we could wash our you know clothes or wash our feet and, and you know face then we have dinner around before 8 pm in the summer but in the winter time we eat way earlier because we don't have this 24 hour electricity and having uh, you know candle is so expensive it was something so precious we cannot use candle the maximum we can use is like some kind of a oil with the thing it's very like not bright it smells really bad it's not good for your lung but it was the cheapest we do but even that oil was so precious parents would be like eat quickly and just go to bed uh, we we do that and our day ends uh, on the weekends it's different weekends we do not go to school so we get up we eat we yeah, be assembled in all those kind of manual labor in the morning. Once that is gone, we come home and we eat breakfast and then we go, home, go somewhere to search for food. So my case, I was always, you know, knocking the door on our friends' houses. And now I'm like, people think, now I'm like, when I try to meet my friends, I text them or call them. In North Korea, you, you, we didn't have those communication methods. So only way for me to meet my friends is going outside and knocking everyone's door <laughs> and see whoever was at home that time. In a way, it's like it's such a different universe. I'm, now I'm thinking about it. Like if I want to play with somebody, I had to go knock their door and see if they were home. And if they do, I ask to go, you know, catch green dragonflies together or grasshoppers together. And in the house, we usually have animals like rabbits then i usually often go with my friends to mountains or hills to pick up the plants for uh, rabbits but during that time i you know i shared my plants with the rabbit. and then i'm gonna cover now lastly about adult life so if they're adults they get uh, picked on this assembly works in the morning it's like everyone must go participate if they go to work, usually they don't really have a running factory or nothing. So if the men's case, they get to go to work, they you know drink, they, they play cards, and kill time until until in the afternoon, five five four six p.m. Then they come home. A lot of men will just keep drinking and come home and beat their wives. And women's case, they have to find things to survive, right? Governments do not provide anything to us. Husbands have to go to work and they cannot be operating in the black market system. So wives have to uh, send their kids to school and they send their husbands to work. And they usually have to go to black, uh, black market to trade and finding ways to survive. And so this was like very general, common, North Korean's life so vividly remember every morning because Pyongyang had a better electricity even though we had those radios in the countryside we don't often use them because of no electricity radios don't work but in Pyongyang I remember every morning this huge song comes out from every radio and we all get up the same time 
and then they just like it's everything's uniformity there's not being individualistic so we all get up at the same time we all go to do the same work and come home eat the breakfast at the same time go to work at the same time and the radio literally beeps at 12 p.m and then letting us know it's a lunch time <laughs> and then when the the day closes so literally radio beeps again like oh you had a great day you all go home now have an evening with your family and safe journey to your home so it was like uh, i still remember those days and how how the universe can be how the you know countries can be this different I hope they really helped you to guys understand North Korea a bit better. And I've been recently talking about my um, libertarian or limited government side. I love you guys and I, lo I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye! E aí, você achou essa história convincente? Você acredita nessa refugiada norte-coreana? Deixe aqui nos comentários. E se você ainda não é inscrito no canal, se inscreva aqui, vale a pena, eu te garanto. E não se esqueça de ativar as notificações para você ficar por dentro de todos os vídeos que a gente coloca aqui no canal. E deixe o seu like, ele é extremamente importante para a gente aqui no Núcleo da Terra, ajuda muito. Muito obrigado por você chegar até aqui e a gente se vê no próximo vídeo. Beleza? Valeu!